On the 30th of January 2014, the presiding officer announced plans for a Women in Public Life development scheme. The scheme was launched on the 9th of October. This was the first time the mentees met their mentors and were formally welcomed by the presiding officer. With women being significantly underrepresented in public life, this scheme has an important role to play. It will help to ensure the effective development and progression of women into roles that often have a direct influence on people's lives across Wales. The development scheme will provide a mentoring, shadowing and training opportunity for 14 women in Wales for a period of up to 18 months. Mentees will be provided with the skills and confidence to apply for positions in public life through a programme inclusive of intense personal development and skills training, one-to-one -one mentoring support and role shadowing opportunities at the highest levels in public bodies. Um, I'm very pleased to welcome you here this afternoon um, and you've come from all corners of Wales. I'm absolutely thrilled. So, for those who don't know, my name is Rosemary Butler and I have the great privilege of being the presiding officer here at the National Assembly for Wales. Um, I'm really pleased to see so many of you here today and all smiling faces, which is not something I get in this, uh, <laughs> this establishment very often. Um, so I'm really pleased to see you and because today marks the beginning of a very important journey for the successful 14 mentees of the Women in Public Life Development Scheme. It will surely be a challenging but also a very rewarding journey that will provide you with the confidence and the experience to become the future decision makers in Wales. And just speaking to you this morning, after one meeting in Biltham this morning, you all seem to be transposed. Is there such a word as transposed woman? But uh, yes, it's, uh, which is wonderful. And you're all enjoying it, which is fantastic. So I would like to congratulate you all on making it this far. And I know that the level and number of applica applicants was very impressive. Uh, so you should be really proud that you've actually got, got this far. Now, a huge thank you to all the successful mentors, too, because without your generosity and giving your time and experience to someone else, this scheme would not succeed. But I've spoken to a few mentors this morning, and they are getting so much out of it that it's just wonderful. So I would like to just spend a few moments talking about mentoring, because I strongly believe that it plays an essential role in the battle for gender equality. So, so why is that? Well, research shows that women tend to be naturally less confident than men unless there is something out there, um, unless there is someone out there, a more experienced woman in, in your cases, uh, who believes more in you than you do in yourselves, then it's extremely difficult for women to start building the confidence to make the next step in their career. And last night I was in Abergavenny for the launch of the Abergavenny I Am Woman Business Club. And it was quite amazing, these inspirational girls and older women and what they've done, and they don't think they've actually done anything, you know, because they've just got on and done it. Uh, but it's amazing what they have done and the confidence it gives them. But the big thing there was mentors and mentees. So it's quite obvious, it's very successful. And uh, we don't just want women mentors, of course we want men as well. So I hope this um, scheme will inspire the mentees themselves to do the same with other less experienced women. So you might be a mentee today, but quite soon you're going to be a mentor, so be prepared. So this scheme is not only about mentoring, of course. The successful candidates will be provided with specific training, and they will be attending networking events, which play an important role in the building of the right contacts and, the, and, the, and your confidence. You will have the opportunity to role shadow women and men, and this is really important. Role shadowing men and women in decision-making positions, including elected members here of the Assembly and chairs of public boards. And I do thank those people for giving up their time, uh, because um, I've always said, whenever you succeed, you should never pull the ladder up behind you, and hopefully just uh, make sure the ladder's there for you. So I'd like to say a big thank you to the Assembly members who are here today, who are showing their support to the scheme, and also to our management board, uh, members who are here, management board, where are you? Yeah, you can see them, they're all quite shy. <laughs> but they actually do make sure this, this establishment is open, democratic, and I, we're pleased to know we've won lots of awards for family-friendly fr place to work. So there's all sorts of things happening. So I'd like to say a big thank you, everyone. Um, but thank you again for those amongst you who have agreed to do, to, to do this mentoring and shadowing. It's, I can't stress how pleased I am that you're doing it, but we do need more people. So please do let our staff know if you know someone else who might like to be involved. 
Now, role shadowing will be an invaluable opportunity for our mentees to get a direct experience of what is meant, it means to be a board member or an elected member or a director of an organisation. And until you actually get in there, you don't have any ideas. You might have preconceived ideas, but until you're actually in there, you don't know. So today, I'm not going to talk to you in depth about the background to the campaign and its individual projects. Instead, I'd like to show you a video that explains very clearly why it is so important that the campaign to get more women into public life and for gender equality in all aspects of life and why it's important it continues. that the Prime Minister will agree with the CBI and me. Imagine you're at Heathrow, as I happen to be, and my office said, you better look in the Daily Mail, and I opened it and saw that. That's me, by the way, when I got divorced 10 years ago. Um, and I just wonder, would a man have that kind of coverage? I think that gender injustice is possibly the biggest injustice in the world if you're talking about a disadvantaged group. Not a minority, a group. But I think it may be the, the biggest, most systematic deepest seated prejudice stroke injustice in the world and addressing it may also be the key to achieving all sorts of other positive changes in the world in relation to um, sustainable development and peace and prosperity and on it goes. I think this is a glaring injustice and I'm impatient for change. life and as a result their voices are not being heard as effectively as they should. As a woman and as a politician I want to see a fair representation of women in decision-making positions particularly in public appointments. It was quite interesting not seeing it, just hearing the music. I felt I ought to do an Isadora Duncan at some point and sort of do that. Um, but um, you can see that does paint a grim picture uh, of the current situation. And it's with initiatives like this that together we can actually change that picture. Um, before I introduce a really inspirational woman, Joy Kent, I'd just like to say that what I've got out of this campaign is fantastic. I've met so many amazing women um, that I do quote people like women farmers from North Wales and singers from Zimbabwe who've done the most amazing things. So uh, it's been a real joy for me and I hope this, th this continues. But before we all get a chance to know each other um, and meet each other, I would like to invite Joy Kent, Chief Executive of Harateg, an inspirational woman in her own right, to say a few words. Joy. 
Thank you very much, Rosemary. And I'd just like to say, this is like a love fest. This is just a love-in, isn't it? But, um, but Rosemary has been an incredible inspiration for us. And not just inspirational, but actually done things that really make a difference, you know? And, and I, this is one of those, and you're all part of that. So it is a bit of a love-in, because this is an amazing day to be launching this. So, and I know we're losing Rosemary at the next... Um, election in that she's leaving, she's not being voted out, she's going. Um, and, um, and I just want to sort of say thank you. You have been an inspiration to me, and um, thank you for everything that you've done, all the practical and strategic things, because we need both. Um, and, and it's been an amazing You're time. Welcome. Thank you. So, Joy Kent, Chief Executive of Quarateg. If anybody doesn't know, Quarateg uh, has been around for about 23 years now. Um, and we, our vision is a Wales where women achieve and prosper. Um, and you're part of that now. You're a big part of, of that. So we're really, really pleased to be working with Rosemary and with our partners at Cardiff Uni um, to deliver this um, mentoring scheme on behalf of, of the presiding officer. Um, it is hugely important to us. Um, I've come from a meeting this morning with the chief scientific officer and a lot of scientists, or female, um, who are talking about the importance to get, of getting more women into science, technology, engineering and maths. So that's the other part of what we do really, which is about widening, broadening horizons, getting women to think much more broadly across a whole range of different subject areas, and then working with women to get um, them into those leadership roles. And although this morning was about that broadening guess what came up we need more women in leadership to show to be those role models but also to be to contribute to the important decisions that are made for on our behalf um, in Wales and there are going to be opportunities there for bringing both of those in initiatives together I hope because it came up straight away in that in that meeting that we need more women in lead leadership positions in academia generally so you know that might be one thing that you want to put in into um, the memory for somewhere you might be wanting to go um, after this or something that we might look at together um, I did suggest but I don't know whether they'll take me upon this but I suggested for that report that comes out um, from that uh, that we should say we should call it it's not rocket science because seriously it isn't you know the reasons for this the need for this are really really obvious and actually some of the interventions some of the things that we need to do they're not rocket science science either. It's about being human. It's about being um, committed to and delivering on equality. And I think that's what's, what's really important. And also, there's a massive economic drive for this in Wales. Massive. Um, so we can make all the arguments. I don't think we need to carry on making the arguments. Let's just get on and do it. So thank you for being part of that journey. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Thank you very much. They say it's not rocket science. Actually, rocket science is easier than trying to get women into public life. So I think we need to sort of revert that round. But um, I'm fortunate to be in a position where I can actually decide I would like to, quite like to do something. But I can't do it unless I've got a team behind me. And this place is so successful. Fantastic men working here. But the woman who's at the top is Claire Clancy, a most amazing woman. Um, she was quite shy and retiring, but my goodness me, she's a woman and a half. So thank you very much, Claire, for what you've done. Thank you, management team. But I can't finish without thanking Craig Stevenson. Craig is, is fantastic. He doesn't realise, but he's been actually my mentor um, while I've been in this role because equality runs right through the man. It's fantastic. So, Craig, thank you so much. Claire, thank you very much. And do thank the management team because I say... It's not going to have a position unless you can use it, and you can't use it, and you'll get other people who are prepared to come along with uh, sometimes zany ideas, but um, this is really working very well indeed. So it might not be rocket science, but that's easier. You know, a degree in metaphysics is not a problem. It's trying to get all these fantastic women into, into public life. So thank you so much for coming. I'm sorry I can't come on your hike this afternoon. Um... Uh, but I understand it's going to be very entertaining as well as physically good for you. So um, when the bodies are picked up from the barrage... <laughs> anyway, do enjoy it. Um, so please, I think lunch is, is, is served at the back there. Uh, don't forget to let a member of staff know if you, you, know, you know somebody else who wishes to get involved or you want to be involved in another part of the scheme or provide role shadowing because it's all about you. We can't do it unless we're together. So, you know, united to stand and... 
divided we fall. And I will quote my friend, the Dalai Lama, who I've never met, but I would like to meet him. Um, and he has said recently at a peace conference in uh, United Nation that the saviors of the world are the Western women. So you think about that. And the other quote is that if you think you're too small to make a difference, you try sharing a bed with a mosquito. So I want swarms of mosquitoes leaving here this afternoon, but not until you've eaten all the sandwiches. So thank you very much indeed, and I look forward to seeing how this uh, amazing program actually rolls out. Jochen Bauer, thank you so much.